you're feeling stuck in your life right now, or you can't see your way, or you feel like you're sinking and you're about to go under the water. The truth is, sometimes we all need a miracle. And if that's you, then today's service is for you. My name is Jason Hatley. I'm the lead pastor here at the Journey Church in Boca Raton. And I want to thank you for finding us here on our YouTube page. We have an amazing service planned today that's going to help you connect with God and in this new series, experience the extraordinary power of Jesus in your life. So let me help you get the most out of today's service as we begin. First of all, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming uh, services or videos here on our site. And uh, while you're at it, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and let people know, hey, this is a service that you might want to check out. And hey, if you want to, go ahead and click that share button and uh, send a link to a friend or family member who might also enjoy today's service as well. And then here on the screen, you're going to see a QR code. So if you would take a moment and scan that, or if you're not able to scan the QR code, just click the more link below this video where you can see some links that are going to help you get the most out of the service today. If you click on those links, first of all, you're going to have an opportunity to complete your connection card and take some spiritual next steps to grow in your faith and share some prayer requests. Also, you'll be able to download your message notes so that you can follow along in the outline today, and you'll even be able to worship through giving as well. And you'll see a link in the more area just below as well. So today's going to be an amazing day. I'm glad that you're here. Let's go to our service and to our worship team. I was lost with a broken heart. Pick me up and now I'm set apart. From the ash I am born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hands. You are more than my words could say. I follow you, Lord, for all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your way. Forever safe in unending grace. Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, we lift you higher For love, for love, for love, never ending Oh, oh, oh Come on, sing You are alive in us Nothing can take your place You are all we need Your love has set us of the darkest night let your love be the shining light breaking chains that were holding me you sent your son down to set me free everything in this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live let your will be done I won't stop till your kingdom come come on sing it out you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, we lift you higher. The love, the love, the love, never ending. Oh, 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 yeah. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free.
Hey, it's Pastor Jason, and as you can tell, I'm out here on our beautiful patio, and some things are starting to look a little bit different around here, and I want to tell you why. In fact, I want to give you a big update on our Celebrate Baptism project. Now, for those of you who may be new to the journey, Celebrate Baptism is an important building project that we're in the middle of right now to transform our outdoor fountain into a beautiful baptistry where we can baptize every week the people who are coming to faith in Jesus here at The Journey. And also as a part of the Celebrate Baptism project, we're going to renovate our outdoor patio to protect against flooding hazards and hurricane and storm hazards, as well as turn this into a ministry space that we can use all throughout the year, not only for baptisms, but for weddings and fellowships and so much more. And I have a big update for you on this project because as you know, our overall goal for Celebrate Baptism is $250,000 between now and September 30th of this year. And so we set some stepping stone goals to help us stay on track and to reach that big overall goal. And we had a big goal to reach stepping stone number two to raise the first $100,000 by Easter, by today. And I'm excited to share with you that not only have we met stepping stone number two, but we have exceeded stepping stone number two with over $115,000 already given to this important project. So way to go, Journey family. I'm so excited about that. Now, that means that we are beginning to move into some new territory when it comes to Celebrate Baptism. For starters, demolition is going to begin very soon out here on our patio. And that's why we've roped off the patio. And after today's service, we are officially closing the patio to begin construction and demolition here on this beautiful patio. But that also means that we're now gonna be moving into stepping stone number three, which is an important part of this project to not only demo our patio, but to rebuild out here something beautiful. And I'm gonna have an update for you on stepping stone number three next week, but for today, two big things. One, on your way out, I have an overview packet that I want you to take, and it's gonna give you a big overview of what we've done so far and what's left, including some very, very important and fun updates and sponsorship opportunities with this baptism project. And next week, I'll give you a full update on stepping stone number three, but for now, Let's celebrate God's faithfulness and all the great things that are happening with the Celebrate Baptism Project. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. And I've been born again to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer.
Welcome back. And if we haven't had a chance to meet, my name is Jason Hatley. I'm the lead pastor here at The Journey. And I'm so glad that you're joining me today as we continue our teaching series called I Need a Miracle. And I cannot wait to share with you the amazing miracle that Jesus did in Matthew chapter 14 and how he wants to work a miracle in your life today as well. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. But first, for those of you who may be joining me right now on one of our social media pages, I'm going to invite you to jump over and join me live right here on our website at Boca journey.tv because I really want you to get the most out of today's service and you can do that here on our website. For example, you can click that blue button by the live stream player and download your message notes so you can follow along in the scriptures today. Also, I want to draw your attention just below the live stream player because that's where you're going to find your connection card. And if you haven't done so already, I want to invite you right now to begin completing your connection card. Now, if you're a member or regular attender, you know what to do. Put your name and email address, and then let me know how you're watching the service today. But if today's your first time with me, let me say welcome. I'm so glad to have you as my guest. And all of that I ask is that you complete as much information as you feel comfortable sharing here on your connection card. And then in that drop down menu, be sure to let me know if you are a first or second time guest. And then as you make your way down the card, you're going to see a question that says, how did you hear about the journey? As you might imagine, that's really helpful information for me. Maybe you found us online or on YouTube or a friend told you about the service today, but if you would let me know. And then you'll also see a question that says, how are you watching the service today? So if you're joining me here on our website at bocajourney.com, you can check that button, or maybe you're watching on YouTube or one of our other ways, you can let me know. I would appreciate that as well. Then as you complete that first part of your connection card, click next, and that will take you to the second part of your connection card where you can share a prayer request, and I'd be really honored to pray for you this week, but also you can share your mailing address. And if today is your first time with me, I hope that you'll do that because this week I want to send you a free copy of this book called Unshakable, Standing Strong When Things Go Wrong. And all you need to do to receive that is just complete and submit your connection card during the service today. Okay, click next one last time. That's going to take you to the final area of your connection card where you're going to see some spiritual next steps that you can take. And I hope that you will consider taking some of these steps today. For example, we have a really fun uh, event coming up this Friday. It's going to be our beach picnic where we're going out to Red Reef Park. It's a bring your own picnic dinner uh, kind of thing. And we're all going to meet up at the beach. We're going to have some beach games. And it's just a really a great opportunity to hang out at the end of the week, meet some amazing people from the journey and have some fun as we head into the weekend. So check that beach picnic next step to learn more about that. Also coming up in two weeks, we're going to have our next membership class. And I want to invite you, if you're new to the journey, or if you're not yet a member, I want to invite you to discover the blessing and the benefit of having a church family that you are a part of by attending membership class and considering being a member here at The Journey. Now, we're calling this our No Excuses membership class because we're gonna, it's a one-time class, so it's only one commitment. We're providing free lunch and free childcare, so it, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to attend. That'll be on Sunday, April 21st, right after the 11 a.m. in-person service. Check that next step on your connection card to learn more about that. And then also... A quick sneak peek of something big coming up in just a few weeks on Wednesday, May 1st, is going to be our baptism and worship night. I'm so excited about this. That evening, May 1st, uh, Wednesday, May 1st at 7 p.m., we're going to gather here at, at The Journey. We have an amazing night of music and worship with our worship arts team, and we're going to celebrate baptism outdoors under the stars. So if you need to be baptized, check that next step and let me know, and I'll send you the details, and you can join us and be baptized for that. And if you've already been baptized, add that date to your calendar and plan to join us for the baptism and worship night. And so as we come to this moment in our service, I will also want to let you know you have an opportunity to give today during our service. As you saw earlier in the video, uh, we're making some big steps in our Celebrate Baptism project. So I want to invite you to be involved with that. You can give a one-time or uh, automated gift to Celebrate Baptism today, or you can give your normal tithes and offerings today as well. And uh, you can do that online right now by clicking that green button by the live stream player. And you can give by debit, credit, PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App, or just text the word GIVE to 561-420-0606 to learn more about text giving. Oh, as we prepare to turn our focus and our attention to today's message, let's once again go to the Lord in prayer. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, God, we thank you for the great things that we see you doing in our church. And Father, I thank you for those who are finding a home here at The Journey. Lord, we pray for these great upcoming opportunities at our church, like the beach picnic and membership class, as ways, Father, for us to gather together as a church family for the friendships and relationships to be uh, deepened. And God, for us to really understand why you've put us together here in this church family at The Journey and the mission that you've given us to bring the hope and love of Jesus to all throughout South Florida. And Father, today I also want to pray for this message. God, I realize that there are many who are here today who are feeling overwhelmed at work, uh, who are, feel like they're going under in their marriage or in their relationship with their kids. Father, many are in facing storms of life right now. And God, we thank you that we never go through those storms alone. God, you are with us. And Father, we pray that through the scriptures today, Lord, we would see how you can work a miracle in our lives in the storm that we're facing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Welcome to The Journey. My name is Jason Hatley. I'm the lead pastor here, and I'm so glad that you're with me today as we continue this new teaching series called I Need a Miracle, Experiencing the Extraordinary Power of Jesus. And in this new series, we're looking at the amazing miracles of Jesus, and we're talking about how God can still work miracles in your life today as well. So if you haven't done so already, click that blue button by the live stream player and download your message notes so you can follow along with me in the message today. Because today's message, I want to look at an amazing miracle of Jesus for when you feel like you are sinking under the water. And can I just ask you as we begin today, have you ever felt that way before? Like you were about to go under and no matter how hard you tried, you just couldn't get back above the surface. Now, maybe you've experienced that literally, physically in your life before. My wife, Karen, when she was a little girl, she was on vacation with her family, and she was too young to swim, but she was in the pool on a float with her older brother and sister. And when her parents weren't looking, her brother and sister did what older brothers and sisters do. They pushed Karen's float out into the deep end of the pool. Now remember, Karen could not swim yet, and as she drifted further into the deep end, she panicked, and she fell off the float, and she sunk to the bottom of the pool, completely helpless and unable to get back to the surface. And if you ask her about it today, she will tell you that she vividly remembers a man that she doesn't know diving into the pool, diving down to the bottom of the pool, rescuing her and bringing her back up to the surface. And by the way, can I just say, if that man is watching church online today, I'd like to shake your hand. Thank you for saving uh, my wife when she was a little girl. So maybe you've been there before, but maybe that's not the kind of sinking that you've experienced in your life. But however you feel that sinking feeling, you know that it's frightening. For you, maybe you lost your job, and the bills are piling up, and you feel yourself going under financially. You're sinking. Or maybe your marriage is on the ropes, and you've been fighting for it, but now you're just ready to give up and give in, and you feel like you are sinking. Or maybe the relationship that you thought would be the one just ended, and your heart is broken, and you're losing hope that you will ever find the perfect person. And once again, maybe you feel like you are sinking. Or maybe work has become overwhelming. You're barely keeping up. Your boss is a jerk. You'd love to quit, but you can't, and you feel like you are sinking. What do you do when you feel like you're sinking and you need a miracle? Well, today, I want to look at the miracle of Jesus walking on the water and saving Peter 
when Peter was sinking beneath the waves. And I want to talk about how Jesus can work a miracle in your life when you feel like you are sinking as well. Now, we find this miracle in Matthew chapter 14, beginning in verse 22. So let me just kind of set the scene for you as we dive into this miraculous story today. Now, Jesus had just performed one of his most famous miracles. He took five loaves of bread and two fish, and he multiplied that into enough food to feed over 5,000 people. It was an amazing, miraculous day. But it was now getting late, and Jesus was tired, and the disciples were tired, and they need some rest. And so Jesus sends his disciples back across the Sea of Galilee to go back home. And that's where we're going to pick up the story in Matthew chapter 14. You see the scripture there on the screen. Follow along with me as I read. It's beginning in verse 22. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. So Jesus sent the disciples back home. Maybe he said, hey guys, I know you're tired. Go on home. I've got this. But then notice that afterwards, Jesus didn't go straight back to Galilee. Instead, he went away to pray. He didn't go home and binge Netflix. He went away to pray. And there's a lesson for you and I in this as well. When you are exhausted at the end of a long day or at the end of your rope, pray. Because praying will renew your soul and renew your strength far better than doom scrolling Instagram. Jesus prayed. Now, we don't know exactly what Jesus prayed, but I'm pretty certain that he was praying for his disciples because while he was praying back in the scriptures, verse 24, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Israel, but I've been to this part of Israel a couple of times in my life. The Sea of Galilee is a beautiful place, but it sits 700 feet below sea level. So that means that it's very warm. And so what happens is when the cold air of a storm comes rushing over those cliffs and it drops down suddenly and the cold air of the storm meets the warm air of the Sea of Galilee, boom, vicious storms happen. And that's what was happening right here. Now, I want you to just put yourself in that boat for just a moment. Can you imagine being in that boat out on the middle of the Sea of Galilee, miles away from shore, this massive storm is thrashing, thunder, lightning, waves. You feel the mist and the water washing over you. It's dark and the disciples are fighting for their lives in this storm. They are in trouble and they are deeply afraid. Now, I want you to remember something very important about the storm. God does not cause every storm in your life, but he does allow you to go through storms in your life. And though, I, you know, we may be surprised how many storms God do, really does shield us from, there are storms that God allows us to go through. And the reason why is because as followers of Jesus, we go through difficult times just like everyone else does. We're not immune to storms. I mean, even Jesus went through storms. And so if you are going to become like Jesus, you're going to need to go through some storms as well. And here's why. Because storms are laboratories to grow your faith. Storms are laboratories to grow your faith. And so you're not going to grow if your life is always smooth sailing. It's in the storms that your faith goes deeper, that your character is developed, that you are become more and more like Jesus. And that's where the disciples find themselves at the end of an exhausting day in the middle of a storm. And isn't that just the way storms in life are, right? I mean, storms never come at the perfect time. They always come when you're exhausted or at the end of your rope. And they, this is where the disciples found themselves. But then notice what happened next in verse 25. About three o'clock in the morning. Now, hold your finger right there for just a moment. I don't want you to miss this. The disciples probably departed from the the last miracle to go across the Sea of Galilee around 5 or 6 p.m. Now it's 3 a.m. They've been fighting this storm and out on the sea for over nine hours. They are at the end of their rope, and they're thinking, this is it. We are about to go under until, the verse continues, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. 
when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Now, let me just say, if you are exhausted from fighting for your life in the middle of the storm that you are in, you might not trust your eyes either. And the disciples didn't. It's dark, it's rainy, they're already afraid, and they see this figure out on the water. They immediately think this is a ghost. So the disciples are totally freaking out here. In verse 27, but Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said, take courage, I am here. Now, I know you're not out on a physical storm in the middle of the Sea of Galilee right now, but I have no doubt you're probably going through a storm, and if not, you're about to go through one. And I want you to just think for just a moment about the storm that you are facing. Can you picture it? Can you see it? Are you there? Can you just imagine that storm? And then as you do, I want you to say these words aloud with me that Jesus said to his disciples, don't be afraid, take courage, I am here. Can you say those words aloud with me right now? Ready, go. Don't be afraid, take courage, I am here. One more time, twice as loud. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Now listen, Jesus might not come at the time that we think that he should, but Jesus knows the storm that you're in, and he knows when you need him the most. And Jesus waited until the darkest part of the night. He waited until the disciples were far away from shore, and their their strength and their hope was gone. And then In that moment, Jesus taught them this lesson that they would need again and again throughout the course of their lives. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Now, one of the disciples who was in that boat, he took courage. His name is Peter. And in verse 28, that's where Peter enters the story. It says, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I would have stayed in the boat, but not Peter. Peter took courage. He had faith. He got out of the boat when no one else did. And Peter was walking toward Jesus. A miracle was happening. And, you know, this raises a question that many of you have been asking as we begin this new series. And the question is, well, Jason, what is required for a miracle to happen? What are the circumstances around which a miracle occurs? And we actually find the answer to that question in the verses of this miracle story we're looking at today. So this is not in your notes, but maybe just in the margin of your notes, you might jot this down because there are certain elements that are necessary for a miracle to happen. First of all, The first requirement is there's a need. So just write the word need somewhere in the margin of your notes. There's a need. Jesus never does a miracle to show off. He always does a miracle to meet a real need. And these disciples, they were in great need. They thought they were going to sink. And then the next requirement is obedience. Obedience. So God gives an instruction, and even if it doesn't make sense, like, you know, getting out of a boat, to to stand on water in the middle of a storm, even if it doesn't make sense, you obey and say, okay, God, I will will do that. I will obey what you say. And because Peter obeyed Jesus, Peter put himself in the path of a miracle. Now, the next requirement for a miracle is faith. So just jot that down in the margin of your notes. Faith, where you say, God, I believe that you will meet my need when I obey you. I have faith faith. And that's what Peter did. Peter did not think twice about walking on the waters to Jesus. He had faith, but it wasn't foolish faith. You know, Peter didn't just do what he wanted to do. Peter asked for Jesus's permission. And so when Peter stepped out of the boat, he wasn't doing what Peter wanted to do. He was doing what Jesus wanted him to do. And listen, this is so important because sometimes we expect God to work a miracle based on what we want. But miracles are not based on what we want. They're based on what God wants and our obedient and faithful response to that. So for a miracle to happen, there's a need, there's obedience, there's faith. And then the final two requirements for a miracle are prayer and receptivity. Prayer and receptivity. And we find both of those in the following verses. Back in the scripture, verse 30. 
But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? Now, I want you to imagine Peter for just a moment. Are you in the boat once again, looking at Peter stepping out on the waves, and Peter's eyes were locked on Jesus. And as long as he was locked on Jesus and moving toward Jesus, the miracle was happening. He was walking on the waves. But when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and focused on the storm, he began to sink. And the same is true for you and I. When our eyes are on Jesus, when we're moving toward Jesus, you can walk on top of the waves of the storm that you are in. But when you take your eyes off of Jesus, you will begin to sink under the overwhelming waves and wind of the storm that you face. And that's where Peter found himself. He started to sink. So what did Peter do? Well, he prayed. Remember, that's one of the requirements for a miracle. Prayer is a requirement. By the way, you are never going to see miracles happen in your life. If you don't pray, you will never see miracles apart from prayer. And so Peter had the presence of mind to pray to Jesus before he went all the way under the water. Peter prayed the most simple and most urgent prayer you could possibly pray. Do you know what it is? Help. (laughs) That's what Peter said. He said, help. And then notice he didn't call out to the disciples in the boat for help. No, he called out to Jesus for help because he knew that Jesus was the only one who could save him. And when Jesus reached out to save him, Peter didn't swat away Jesus' hand and say, no, 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 I got this. I'm strong enough. I'm smart enough. I can figure this out. No, Peter was receptive. And that's one of the requirements for a miracle. He was receptive. You have to open yourself up to your need for God. You have to be willing to receive the miracle that God wants to do in your life. So Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, and he put them on the unstable circumstances, and he started to sink. And that's why Jesus asked him, why did you doubt me? Now, the word doubt here, it means standing uncertainly between two ways. That's what the word doubt means here in the original Greek, standing uncertainly between two ways. And so Peter started out with great faith but he was uncertain between two ways. He, he could go and focus on Jesus or he could focus on the storm around him. And so because he couldn't focus on both at the same time, the doubt crept in and down he went. But Jesus did not let Peter sink because of his lack of faith. He took him by the hand. He pulled him out of the water. And the story concludes in verse 32. When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. Now, maybe like these disciples, you find yourself in the middle of a storm right now. And you've been fighting and you've been struggling, but it feels like you're about to go under. It feels like your boat is sinking. The debt keeps getting higher. The last job interview was a flop. The relationship is on life support. The cancer has come back. You feel like you're sinking. You need a miracle. Well, the good news for you today is that no matter what you are facing, Jesus has not forgotten you. He loves you. He's coming to you on the wind and the waves of the storm you're facing, and he can work a miracle in your life when you feel like you're sinking. And that's what I want us to talk about today. Let's talk about from this amazing story what to do when I feel like I'm sinking. And here's the first step to take. When you feel like you're sinking, first of all, remember that Jesus is with me when I feel like I'm sinking. Remember that Jesus is with me when I feel like I'm sinking. Now, the disciples thought they were alone in that storm, but they were never alone. And the same is true for you. You may feel like you are alone in the storm of life right now, but you are not. God is with you. Jesus has promised to be with you. Look at Matthew 28, 20. Jesus says, and to be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so Jesus promises to be with you always, all the way to the end. And just as Jesus was praying for and present with his disciples out on the Sea of Galilee in their storm, he is praying for you and present with you in the storm that you're facing as well. And you say, well, Jason, what difference does that make? Well, what difference does that make? Well, think about it. If you knew that Jesus, the Son of God, who walked on the wind and the wave and calmed the storm, if you knew he was right there beside of you, that he was with you, that he was praying for you, 
Would that not give you courage to endure the storm? Of course it would. Uh, Of course it would. And if you're a follower of Jesus, he is with you through the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, and he is praying for you, pleading for you before the throne of God right now. That's what Romans chapter 8, verse 34 tells us. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, underline this phrase, pleading for us. Jesus is praying for you and pleading for you. He sees you. He sees your needs. He sees your fears. He knows what you're facing, and he's in control of the situation. He he was with you before the storm. He is with you in the storm. He's with you when you walk on the waves, and he's there with you when you feel like you are going under. So call out to him today. That's what Peter did. Peter called out to Jesus because he knew that he needed a Savior. And listen, you need a Savior as well. And when you grab a hold of his hand, here's what will happen next. Back in your notes. Receive God's peace when I feel like I'm sinking. Receive God's peace when I feel like I'm sinking. Did you know that when lifeguards teach children how to swim, one of the first things that they teach them is how to roll over on their backs when they feel like they are drowning? Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, on your back, it keeps you buoyant, all right? So keeps you from going under. It gives you time to calm yourself, to catch your breath, to decide what you're going to do next. And most importantly, it keeps you from flailing and, of course, sinking. Now, unfortunately, most people choose panic over peace when they're drowning. And they reach out for anything. They flail and they sink. And that's what we tend to do when we're sinking in life as well. We panic. We look for a quick fix. And so that's why so many people try to medicate their fears or their storms with alcohol or drugs. Some people try to escape into entertainment or into pornography. Others will make bad Uh, relationship decisions, thinking that the other person can save them. But there's only one person that could save Peter. And there's only one person that can save you, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Now, Peter had just seen Jesus feed 5,000 people. He was watching Jesus walking on the water. I mean, for goodness sake, Peter was walking on the water with Jesus. So Peter knew where to turn when he started to go under. And because he knew that Jesus was greater than the storm, he called out to Jesus to save him. He prayed, and listen, prayer is the key to finding peace in the storm. That's what the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. He writes, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Can I just say, this is why developing spiritual disciplines like regular prayer and reading the Bible daily, this is why it's so important to your life because it prepares you for how to handle the storms when they come. And so when that thunder begins to roll and when the rains begin to fall and when the waves begin to wash over you and you feel like you're about to go under, if you've developed that training, those habits in your life, then you will learn to trust your training. You won't panic, you will pray. Like children who roll over on their backs to stay buoyant and to catch their breath when you're drowning, that's what you can do when you're drowning as well. You can stop, you can breathe, you can pray. And you can let God take you by the hand and replace your panic with his peace. And by the way, can I just add one more thing to this right now? If you constantly find yourself sinking, it could be that you just need to learn how to swim better. You may just need to learn how to swim better because if you are always going from one crisis to the next crisis to the next crisis to the next, then you need to learn how to make wiser, more biblical choices. Listen, you are not helpless. You can pray every day. You can read the Bible. You can be in church weekly. You can build up that spiritual muscle so that when the storm comes and you feel like you're about to drown, you know where to turn and you know what to do. Now, here's the next step when it feels like you are sinking. Back in your notes. Recognize that God's plan is to grow my faith when I feel like I'm sinking. 
recognize that God's plan is to grow my faith when I feel like I'm sinking. Listen, you may be surprised by the storm, but God is not. You may not have seen the storm coming, but God did. When you got the call on your way to the office that you'd been laid off, you didn't see that storm coming, but God did. When the doctor called you and told you that the cancer is back, you didn't see that storm coming, but God did. You see, storms are common to everyone. But many Christians have this mistaken belief that obedience to God will guarantee smooth sailing for the rest of your life. But Jesus says something very, very different in John 16, Jesus says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus says, listen, storms are going to come into your life. You can count on it. But God allows you to go through those storms for the same reason that he allowed the disciples to go through their storm, to grow your faith, to teach you to trust God in ways that you never have before, to make you stronger. Now, some storms that you go through in life are the result of your own choices. You made some bad choices to disobey Jesus, and so some storms that you face are what I call storms of correction. And you've gotten off course, but Jesus loves you too much to let you keep going down that path of destruction. So he allows you to go into a storm that will cause you to correct your course and to turn back to him. That's storms of correction. But then other storms are what we call storms of perfection, where you're not off course. You're actually doing the things that you're supposed to do. You're obeying Jesus, but Jesus allows you to go through the storm to perfect your faith, to strengthen you, to make you more like him. And that's the kind of storm that Peter and the disciples were facing right now. They were actually in the storm because they obeyed Jesus. Jesus is the one that told them to sail back across the lake. Jesus knew the storm was coming. They were in the storm because they obeyed. And so the purpose of the disciples' storm was to strengthen their faith. And listen, this is important because Jesus knew that one day he would no longer be with them, that he would be crucified and resurrected, that he would ascend to heaven, and he would no longer physically be with them. And so his disciples needed this lesson. He was growing their faith in this storm so that they would have greater faith for greater storms that they would face in the future. And listen, the same is true for me and you. If you will remember that Jesus is with you, and if you will call out to him for his peace and look for the ways that God wants to grow you through the storm, you will be stronger and wiser when you come out of the storm, and you'll be better for the next storm that you face. And that leads me to our final step for what to do when you're sinking. Back in your notes, and it's this, rely on Jesus to calm my storm when I feel like I'm sinking. Rely on Jesus to calm my storm when I feel like I'm sinking. You know, when Jesus saved Peter and they stepped into the boat, the final miracle of this unforgettable day occurred. The storm stopped immediately. The storm stopped. Jesus calmed not only the storm at sea, he calmed the the storm that was happening in his disciples' hearts. And the Apostle Paul, he experienced a, a similar type of storm in his life. And here's what he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. He wrote, we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. Now that sounds a lot like the disciples out on the Sea of Galilee. And maybe you've been there before too. And maybe you've thought to yourself, there's no way I'm going to get through this. This is it. It's over for me. But look at what Paul did, continuing in the passage. But as a result, We stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us. You see, Paul didn't rely on himself when he was sinking. He relied on God. And God did for Paul what he did for Peter. He reached out his hand, and he rescued him. And after that, Peter had the, or Paul had the faith and the confidence that no matter what storm he would go through, God would rescue him again. And listen, I don't know what storm that you are facing today, but God does. God knows the storm. And not only is God aware of the storm, 
Not only is God with you in the storm, not only does He save you when you're sinking, but He has the power to calm the storm in your life. Listen, the storm that you're facing right now, it won't last forever. It, it won't. It, it won't last forever. It will end one day, either in this life or if not in this life, if you're a follower of Jesus, even if it doesn't end now and you have to endure it all the way to the end of your life, it will end one day when you go to heaven. There are no storms in heaven. But no matter what, no matter what type of storm you're facing or how long it lasts, you can trust that God will eventually calm your storm when you put your faith in Him. Our final verse for today is our memory verse for this week. It's found in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 2 through 3. Let's read this passage aloud together. Are you ready? Go. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord, your God. Listen, can I ask you today? What's causing you to sink right now? What storm is scaring you? Why do you think that God is letting you go through that storm? God is allowing that storm in your life for the same reason that he allowed the storm in the disciples' lives, so that you can know that he is God, so you can know that he is with you, that he is greater than the storm that you're facing and that he will bring you through it. Jesus will come to you in your desperation. He is walking to you today on the very thing that scares you the most. The question is, will you turn to him? Will you call out to him to save you? I hope that you will. In fact, let's pray about that right now. If you will, bow your heads and let's all pray together here at Church Online today. Heavenly Father, you know the storms that we face. You know the storms that cause us fear when we can't see our way when it's dark when we feel like we're on our own, when we're being tossed and battered around. God, you know our storms. And today, Father, we turn to you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us your peace. Father, help us to stay focused on you. Help us to stay focused on Jesus, not on the wind and the waves. God, help us to see how you're using this storm to grow us. Now, for some of you here today who have never put your faith in Jesus, I want to lead you in a prayer that you can pray right now. And I hope that you will pray this and make this decision today to make Jesus the Savior and leader of your life. You can just pray this with me quietly in your heart. Pray, Heavenly Father, I pray the prayer that Peter prayed. Save me, Lord. I pray that with urgency and directed to you. Save me, Lord. Help me not to doubt you, but to worship you instead of worry to trust you instead of trembling, to pray instead of panic. I open my life up completely to you, Jesus. And I know that I'm a sinner and that I'm not perfect. So I invite you to come into my life and save me and forgive me of my sins. Be the captain of my ship. Be the leader of my life. I want to follow you from this day forward in the fellowship of your church. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, before we wrap up our service today, there are some important spiritual next steps for us to take. And if you just prayed that prayer to trust Jesus as the Savior and leader of your life, would you let me know about that right now? You can just check that next step on your connection card that says, send me info about becoming a follower of Jesus, or click that purple button by the live stream player. And let me know about that decision that you've made today, because this week I want to be praying for you, but also I have some resources that I want to send to you. One of those is this book called The Next Step for Your Journey. This is going to help you begin this new life that you have in Christ. And we also want to get a Bible in your hands as well. So be sure to let me know about this decision today. You can also email me at follower at bocajourney.com, or you can text the word follower to 561-420-0606. And then if today's your first time with me, don't forget, I have a free gift for you as well. It's this book called Unshakable, Standing Strong When Things Go Wrong. And all you need to do to receive this is just complete and submit your connection card before the end of the service. And we'll send you a free copy of Unshakable this week as our gift 
to you. Now, as we come to this moment in our service, we have an opportunity to worship together through the giving of our tithes and offerings, and I encourage you to do so. Be a part of the life-changing ministry and work that God is doing here at our church. We're seeing God do amazing things, miraculous things here in our church, and none of that is possible without you, without your prayers, and without your support. So would you be a part of, of this great mission that's happening at The Journey and honor the Lord through your giving today? You can give right now online by debit, credit, PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App, or you can just text the word GIVE to the number 561-420-0606 to learn more about giving. And don't forget, as you give today, you can give your normal tithes and offerings, but you can also give above and beyond to our Celebrate Baptism project so that we stay on track and we can uh, begin this construction soon and start building this beautiful new baptistry that we've been working so hard towards. And then also don't forget, if you haven't done so already, be sure to take some of those next steps that we talked about in your connection card and submit that before the end of the service today. If you watch today's service on one of our social media pages, I invite you to jump over to our website at bocajourney.tv where you can complete your connection card today as well. And then let me say thank you for joining me today at The Journey. I hope that you enjoyed today's message. If you think today's message would be helpful to someone in your life, be sure to text or email them a link to this service today. And then also invite someone to be back with you here next Sunday at The Journey as we continue this new I Need a Miracle teaching series. I hope that you'll join us in person at our ministry and worship center. Don't forget, we have two new service times, 9.30 a.m. or 11 a.m. here on Sundays at our ministry and worship center. So join us in person if you can. But if you're traveling and I'm not able to be here in person, you can always join me right here at churchonline at bocajourney.tv. Until then, may the Lord bless you and have a great week.